Find all the zeros of the function given below. Enter the zeros separated by commas. All right, so it says f of x is equal to 6x cubed minus 17x squared plus x plus 10. And in order to find all the zeros of this function, one thing you can do is use the rational zero theorem to help find at least one zero because this is a degree three polynomial, which is not something that you can factor. And if it was a degree two, or below, it would be much easier to identify the zeros, but since it's degree three and any degree three or higher, usually you're not going to be able to factor them. So you can use the rational zero theorem, which helps you list out possible rational zeros, and then you can use that list as a short list of possibilities that you can try by either plugging it into the function to see if you get zero when you plug it in, or you can use synthetic division to see if you get a remainder of zero. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by listing out all the possible rational zeros, and then I'm going to use synthetic division to reduce it um, to a factored form that has a quadratic in it that I can factor, and that will help me to identify the remaining two zeros. So uh, another note, because it is a degree three polynomial, I'm expecting up to three rational zeros. Now there will definitely be three zeros total, but they might not all be rational. They could be irrational or even imaginary in some cases or complex. Um, so I know that I don't necessarily have three rational zeros and rational just means that the number can be written as a fraction. Um, so I know they might not all be rational, but I know that I can have up to three of them and hopefully I have at least one rational zero, and so we're gonna list those out right now. So the rational zeros theorem, this came right out of the OpenStax textbook for college algebra. It says um, that it states that you have a polynomial with integer coefficients, then every rational zero of f of x has the form p over q. Okay, so notice I said it has to be written as a fraction, right? So two numbers that can be written on top of each other where p is a factor of the constant term a sub zero. So this number on the end is your constant term, typically like here we have 10, that's our, that's our um, p as it were. And q is a factor of the leading coefficient, um, which is the one that's in front of the highest degree of x. So that would be your, uh, where your q's are coming from. Okay, so your p's are gonna be factors of 10, your q's are gonna be factors of six. Okay, so I have listed out all of the factors of each of those numbers, and then we're going to create ratios or um, you know, fractions using those. So um, I do a systematic approach here. I will start with you know, all the first uh, value of p on top of each of the values of q. So you can see I have one across the top of all these, so one over one, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 6. So that's the first row. Then I moved on to the 2 for the p, so 2 over all of these, so 2 over 1, 2 over 2, and so on, until I have all of the possibilities listed out. Now once you've done that, you'll notice that some of these fractions will reduce and be repeats of other fractions. Um, so you want to go through and start to um, simplify and identify duplicates. So this one is just the number 1. And we have one half, one third, one sixth, and this is just the number two. Um, then two over two is just one again. So when you divide two into two, you get one. So we don't need that. That's, an, that's a duplicate. Two thirds, two fourths. Well, two fourths reduces to one half. So again, we have a duplicate. We don't need that one. This one's just five. Then five halves, five thirds, five fourths, 10. And 10 over two reduces to five, which we already have here. So we, that's a duplicate, we don't need that. 10 over three, 10 over four, which reduces to five halves, which we already have over here. So that is a duplicate. So then we get a reduced list. And so I have all my possible rational zeros listed out. Also no notice that I have a plus and a minus in front of this list because not only could they be positives, but they could be negatives, all right? So, um, positive one could be a zero of the function or negative one could be a zero of the function and so on throughout all of these. 
So typically what you do once you have them all listed out is you can start by taking them one at a time. Probably you want to start with the easiest ones and either plugging them into the function to see if it simplifies to zero or as I said, use synthetic division. So here I have synthetic division set up. And so this is not a video devoted to teaching synthetic division. So you might need to review on that in another video. But um, if you know how to do synthetic division, you'll see it done here. Um, I've taken the leading coefficients, uh, or not the leading coefficient, but the coefficients of each of the terms of my polynomial and written them down here. Then I took the number one, I'm trying the positive one first. And then I'm gonna go through and synthetically divide and see if I get a remainder of zero. Whoops, went too fast. And as you can see, after I do my synthetic division, I did get a zero remainder. So I got lucky on the first try. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes you have to go back and try negative one. And then I probably would have moved to trying positive two and then negative two, and then maybe five and negative five, and then 10 and negative 10. And once I'd finished checking all the integers, if I still needed to keep looking, I would start working with the fractions. But um, usually the integers are the easy ones to get through. and so I got really lucky on my first try. Okay, so now what do I do with that? Well, now that I know that one is a zero of the function, that means that the factor x minus one is, um, that's a factor of the polynomial. So now I was able to take that and write it as a factor and then take the numbers um, here, ignoring the remainder, but the, the numbers at the bottom row of your synthetic division are the coefficients of a new polynomial that is a factor of your original polynomial. So you take the six and put it time um, as the coefficient of x squared. Why x squared? Because this resulting polynomial will always be one degree less than your original. So we started out with a three degree and now our factor here has um, one degree less because we factored out a, a degree here with x minus one quantity. So if you were to multiply all this back together, you would get back to the original function. So I'm just taking my original function and rewriting it in factored form based on the fact that I know one is a zero of the function and therefore x minus one is a factor of the function. And why is there a connection there? Because look, if I were to plug in positive one into this factor, then I would have one minus one, which would be zero. Zero times all of this would become zero. So a whole function would zero out and then again, of course, that's why we call it a zero of the function. It's a value of x that makes the function equal zero. Okay, so now that we have done this first step, um, we are in a much better position to go forward easily because it was only a degree three polynomial. I now have a second degree polynomial, which I know how to factor. So as long as this is factorable, no big deal. We're gonna be um, done with the hardest part of this question. If it's not factorable, you can use the quadratic formula to find these zeros, okay? So um, I did find out that this was factorable. I used the AC method where I multiplied um, the six times 10 to get negative 60 or the six times negative 10 to get negative 60. Then I was looking for two numbers that multiplied to give me negative 60, which would also have a sum of negative 11, my middle term here. And so I figured that out to be four and negative 15. So then I rewrote my negative 11x as negative 15x, and that should be positive 4x. And I think I might have to fix something. Hold on. Okay, so now that I have my middle term of my quadratic polynomial rewritten as the sum of two terms, I can now begin to factor by grouping. So I'm going to look at the first two terms and take out the three X that is common. And that leaves me with the quantity two X minus five. Next, I will look at the other two terms, four X and negative 10 and factor out the common factor, which is two, leaving me with two X minus five. And this is great because I know I did everything right because now my quantities match and I can take that out as a common factor. Um, so then I have this final all the way factored form, factored down to linear factors. My polynomial has now been factored completely. Cool, because now I can set each one of those factors equal to zero because we know that even if one of the factors were equal to zero, it would make the entire function become zero. Um, so I set each of the factors equal to zero and solved to get the values of x, which would make the function zero out. 
And so I came up with this list of my zeros for this question. So I've actually answered the question. It said find all the zeros of function, and I did that. Um, but let's look at how this connects to something meaning a little more meaningful. So here is the function graphed, and um, you can see what it looks like. Degree three, it's um, you know got the low end over here to the left, and the high end going towards positive infinity upwards towards the right. And there's three places that it crosses the x-axis, showing that there are three real zeros to this function. And when I took each one of the x values I just found, negative 2 thirds, comma, 0 for y, it lands right on the x-axis. And then 1 comma 0, so that was another real rational 0 that I found, 1 comma 0, and then 5 halves. So all three of those are landing right on the x-axis as they should, showing that our answer is definitely good. And graphically, you can see why finding zeros is helpful uh, because sometimes you need to know where a function crosses the x-axis or when everything zeroes out or when you're graphing, it just helps to fill in the gaps in between those zeros once you know um, where those go. So I um, hope that was helpful. Enjoy and see you in the next one.